Okay, so welcome to another episode of Conversations with Kevin, the podcast, and uh, I'm, I'm super excited about having this, my, this next guest. Uh, I've not known him very long, I uh, met him through a mutual friend of mine, of ours, um, Ismini, who's a great value herself, actually. We must get her on, there, must get her on at some point. Um, Kola uh, Adetu. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, sir. So, so. <laughs> welcome, sir. Welcome. Um, so... Kola is uh, specializes. I've been following his stuff on Instagram for some time now, and it's especially around um, well relationships, which is what we're going to get in today. Um, yeah. But also trauma as well. There's a lot of stuff, our childhood wounds and things like that, and um, it's really important. So what what we could be talking about today is you know the dynamics between sort of the masculine and the feminine energies and how we receive, um, uh, how we hear our conversations and how we process information from each other. But also your individual personal trauma and how that affects how you relate to other people, how you receive the world in uh, yourself and forms your beliefs and your and your values as well to a to a degree. So um, before we get into all of that, Cole, if you could sort of give us a bit of a bit of background about yourself and you know how you even come into sort of you know in, into this work in in the first place. Awesome. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you for, you know, if this, is first, this is my fourth podcast I'll be doing. And, um, and um, yeah, you know, we need, we need one another, especially in this work, you know, sure. to yeah, yeah. encourage, inspire, and, you know, each other. And, um, and I'm glad to be here on your podcast, uh, Living Fully. I think it's, uh, yeah, that's what life is all about, yeah. you know. And, um, yeah, I have been on this journey for quite a long time since I came to England, which was 21 years ago. Um, you know, I started from Christian um, spirituality. Then I moved on from that. I went into Anthony Robbins, you know, philosophy and teaching. Then, you know, because of my circumstance at the time, you know, I was looking for a deeper meaning you know, in my life, not just success, not just to have things or create or achieve. I was looking for a deeper meaning than that, to accept my circumstances, to be at peace, to be content. And then I moved on from here. I went into um, Tolly Eckerd, and that was very, very, very helpful. That was mm. incredibly, mm. that changed my whole practice, actually, yeah. the way I show up in the world, my way of being in the world which is more have to do with my physiology, um, how, I, how I show up every day, you know. And then, um, and then for some reason, I got into yoga, and that also really transformed my life, um, Ashtanga Yoga in 2010. And then, um, then I was learning back then. Um, and for some reason, yeah, I was in that for a while. I got into A Course in Miracles, which also – Hope for my um, my awareness and um, and was very helpful, you know, at that time in my life because I was in so much chaos with my um, immigration circumstance in the UK at that time. Um, I was in so much chaos, and I need to, you know, the kind of person I am, I need to find meaning and and clarity. You know, even if nothing happens in my life, I'm content and able to engage in the world as a normal human being mm. because um, all of us have suffering, you know, whether there's nothing like big suffering, small suffering, all of us have suffering. And, um, and the course miracle really, really helped me a lot at that time. And then I moved out of London, um, I came into Bristol, and I started having a relationship with the help of sex, a long-time relationship. And I begin to <laughs> experience a different dynamics. Mm. Because when you're by yourself, it's all about you. You don't even know you're doing it. Um, you just think it's just all about, it's about your own awareness, your own perception of the world. There's no one there mirroring something different for you or mirroring, you know, something you don't want to see about yourself or the person um, mirroring or you being a mirror to them and maybe something that you don't even want to see about them. You don't have that challenge. You know, it's not life. It's another human being mm. presenting their own story, their own, what I call now, their own neurobiological history to you. Um, and you have to deal with that. And then... And then that took me a while to figure out 
you know, none of the resources I had, you know, a cost miracles and Johnny Robbins to prepare me for it. And I, you know, I dear guy, dig all the resources. I couldn't understand what was going on. And then I met a lovely woman with my wife and um, we became my wife and we had a child and we had the, you know, I tell you the truth, when you fall in love with a woman, um, it's a different thing entirely, which is why when people fall in love, um, you know, things can go really good in one way and things can go really, really bad. Mm. And, and, and it does not really matter where it goes because, it, 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 you know, either way, you both would have challenge in the relationship. Mm. And that is, you know, and so th that's what I encounter with this wonderful woman. And I begin to, I didn't even understand that. My own history, mm. my own trauma history. I didn't even use the word, I didn't even use the language trauma mm. in that you know, at that time, I didn't even have the language for it. I didn't even have a language of trauma. I didn't have a language of neurobiology or, you know, all I knew back then was just cognitive, which is, you know, perception, thinking, you know, my own, just changing my own state, which doesn't involve physiology. But your focus is more on your thinking, your perception, which we all know, change your thoughts, change your life, you know, all those things were they are great. However, when you step into into relationship, it's it's a interpersonal neurobiology. You know, your neurology, your biology are constantly in dialogue, and that is where that is where the that is where the you know the battle is. Um, even though it's a war battle, that is where the challenge is, and um, and you know. We separated, which is, you know, first time I'm saying that publicly. And I went, you know, with my, with, with the skill that I have in life, which is to, you know, find meaning, whatever you may have handed to you, you know, whether like gives you war or whatever you may have, you know, you have to find meaning. And then I began to go into, I found some books, but I was lead, I was doing listening partnership um, with some friend, which is where you just talk and talk, and they validate your feelings and stuff like that. And for a kind of myself, you know, and for the with the level of conflict that I have with in my marriage and with my wife, you know, and that and that to dig more mm. and there to find out what is really really going on for us, you know. Um, I just felt really overwhelmed and I felt like I don't have the resource for this. That's the mm. word. Mm. I didn't have the resource to deal with this, to understand this. So my mind was open. Then I came onto Instagram and I began to find people like Dr. Daniel Siegel, who is their, you know, the originator of interpersonal neurobiology, which is the, you know, the field of neuroscience and, um, and um, evolutionary biology. Then I began to find the works of Dr. C. Dr. C. Johnson, who created the you know emotional focused therapy, um, which builds on the work. Both of them builds on the work of John Bowlby, which is attachment science, um, which talks about um, you know our first experience of. Um, relational, um, our first relational experience with our first primary caregiver. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, if you really look into attachment science, you know, you will find the whole of human history. And um, it's, 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 it's just, it's everything. You know, attachment science is just, it tells you a lot about, about, you know, yourself, about your interpersonal neurobiology. Because, you know, what I'm actually coming into right now is has to do with, um, has to do with neurobiology. Mm. And, um, and our biology is so interpersonal. Um, and what I mean by that is that, um, you know, our biology, it doesn't exist by itself. It's not a personal thing. Our biology is interpersonal. And, um, um, you know, it's having a relationship 
with with you with, you know relationship it's is biological um imperative um and um yeah and that is that is what you know i'm actually begin to understand and then um and then i came across people like um um doctor you know so many doctors mm. <laughs> i came across doctor um steven porges and we will came will you know came ac- will originate um the polyvagal theory and um which is the science of safety which mm. which was talking about you know the vagus nerves the dorsal the autonomic nervous system and how the whole play and we, oh, he also talks about uh, neuroception mm. not perception but neuroception that our nervous system is constantly scanning our environment for either danger cue or safety cue okay. and um, and if you if if you've had trauma in your um in your childhood um your brain wiring is completely confused mm. so you you will have faulty neuroception which means that you know your cosmic scanning for threat all the time and even when you're safety you can notice it uh, which is very depressing which is very unfortunate for most people and um yeah so that's where i am at the moment and so you, yeah that's brilliant thank you so there's a few things that i pick i wanted to pick up and want to dive, dive into straight away from um some of the things yeah. you were saying some of the, some of the stuff that you were learning so you were, uh, first of all when people think of trauma, they think, well, nothing really happened to me in my life. It wasn't like I didn't have, you know, a, a dad that beat me or I wasn't sexually abused or they think of that high level type of trauma when actually we all experience trauma on, on some sort of level as a, as a child or make meaning of something that which is then traumatic in, in, in that sense is at the same time, right? Yes, absolutely. So could you, could you talk on, first of all, could you, well, I'm not sure if they would, they would go in. So the first things that I, if you could explain trauma a bit more and how we perceive it as a as a young adult or as a child, and then maybe a bit more a bit more on the sort of the neurobiology side of things. Cool. It is very. That's a very good question, uh, Kevin. It's, it's just a brilliant question. Like I say, I didn't start using the word trauma mm. <laughs> up until about you know probably about ten months, eleven months ago. Mm. It's weird. You know, it shows how our society we are so behind. Uh, when it comes to relational trauma, you know, trauma is relational. Mm. Um, you cannot have trauma by yourself. No. It's just impossible. It's relational, and there is small T trauma, which, you know, which, it's, which is what society don't recognize. So try to recognize, you know, the big T trauma, which is when you have an accident, you know, a fire on the house, um, you know, um, you fell into something, maybe you fell into the, you know, you fell into a river or, or, a, or a dog suddenly jump onto you. Yeah, those are really valid trauma. You, you, trauma is what happened inside of us. Mm. It's not an event. It's what happened inside of us. And, in, and also in the absence of an empathetic um, witness. If you, don't have, if, if you don't have somebody at that time to help you process the event you make you make your body goes into shock and you create a story to mm. support that mm. because so it's trauma is what happens inside of us sure. and they have sent over empathetic witness so um and um yeah and you know what uh, dr bessel Bex, Bezel van der Dork, I mean van der, van der Kork talked about trauma being meaningless and um, you know that trauma is meaninglessness and, um, and I was thinking about it today um, that you know it's very interesting because um, when you say trauma is meaninglessness and you know you'll be, talk, you'll be thinking along the line of chaos mm. and um, which is what, what trauma is and it's not just a perception, it's not just a way of thinking it's it's also very much your biology your brain your brain function your brain function goes into overdrive and you know so like i said earlier your neuroception of safety um it's not like working 
And um, yeah, let's put that aside. The big T trauma, which is when you have dogs or fell into a river, or you have an accident, or you have some, you know, physical accident that happens to you. That is very valid. And and they are, and they are the same thing. But the one that society don't recognize the most, the one that we cannot see, is the emotional neglect trauma. And um, and you know, we all have been to some degree being a victim of this um, emotional neglect trauma. It's a really, really big, big thing um, because you, you could see a child with perfect life goes to ballet, goes to dancing, you know, have a perfect life, great house, and you will never know that child is having, you know, emotional neglect, you know, where their, their feeling is not validated by their primary caregiver, where their, you know, where... Um, their feelings is not validated or, you know, they're not being hugged often or, or held when they are taking, when they are, when they are crying, you know, just, just, just look at the importance of being held as an adult when, when you, when you're feeling confused or when you have, you know, when you're feeling confused, for example, and somebody holds your head, somebody holds your cranial area and hold you. It's a very, very powerful, um, very powerful physiological response of safety. Um, and when a child does not, does not experience this, you know, they go into, they, they go from, and when the child does not experience this cue of safety from a primary caregiver, and they don't have, and that remains consistent, you know, and nobody comes to intervene in that matter. They, they go from hyper arousal, um, arousal into hypo arousal, which means that they shut down the, 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 the feelings. And it's not them, it's the, it's, it's the, which is where biology comes, is the biology doing this? Is the brain doing this? Just shut down. And when that happens, you know, they're no longer responding or receiving cues. Sorry, I lost you there. I, I can't hear you. Sorry, why does, the, why does the biology do that? Why does it um, shut down that way? Because your brain has to keep you alive, you see. The, the, pop, the, 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 the function of the brain is to, is to make you survive. <laughs> Very good question. I'm learning that same time. Honestly, the function of your brain is to keep you alive. Sure. Which is, which is why some people say that ego never dies. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, you know, the 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 people who are very terrible on this planet never dies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because the and they are, these people sometimes they can be very you know high functional, power functional people because their brain. You know, it, you know, the brain is designed to keep you alive. Right. So, and it will keep you alive in whatever way is possible. Mm. Um, which is why people can have, you know, and when, and which is, which is where, you know, psychopathology begins. When you start shutting down emotion and you can no longer receive, you know, safety, safety cue or, or um, recognize safety cues. Um, then you move into dissociation, which is or what is what is known in the past as multiple personality disorder, mm. and um, you begin to, you just dissociate from your body, and your brain just goes into like just into multiple personality, and you can you know how to shut down bad experience, you know how to shut down your emotion. And just and because as well you have to survive, you have to show up in the world. You have to pass that exam at work, at school, as a mm -hmm. child. You have to meet that that friend that your mom wanted to meet, even though you've been neglected. Your brain has to create a show, you know, a way to show up in your life mm -hmm. to deal with that. So you know, you show that part of yourself to deal with that part of yourself. We need to pass the exam. Right. Do you get that? You know, you show down, you know, part of yourself to, 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 you know, to create another part of yourself that needs to deal with, you know, 
going to a dance class or going to a night out with your friends. And, and then people don't really, people cannot see all of this. You know, people cannot see this emotional um, showdown, this lack of connection that is really going on. And, um, and which is what trauma, which is where, you know, and all, it all begins with um, emotional, with childhood emotional neglect. And um, yeah, and which is where the small T um, is all about. Okay. And could you explain for, to us then, um, what is the, how is our neurobiology, um, I know you've touched on it just now, but how, how does that affect our neurobiology and why is neurobiology so important to us as, a, as human beings? Cool. Um, like I said, that um, the brain has evolved for billions of years to, for example, um, I'm not an expert on this, and I'm not claiming to be an expert at all. I'm a mm. student, mm. and I'm learning a lot myself. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you look at our, you know, our cousins or you know, pe- you know, the reptilian um, family, for example, you know, where our, if you look at our our nervous system, the vagus nerve. You know, the, its first development. We have the same th- development as their reptilian um, animals and where we can, you know, you know, is, is kill or be killed. Um, I go to, I go to, I go to eat me before I hit you, uh, which is survivor. And we, we all share this part of the brain with all of the animals in the kingdom. Um, and both human being, we evolve from that to become homo vincula, which is um, a, a homo sapien that bonds. We are a animal that bonds with other animal. We are bonding, um, a bonding animal. So we need other people to survive. Um, if a dinosaur come after you, for example, and you have no one to call, um, to call on, you have no one to call, you're in trouble. So we need, we need other people, you know, a few people whom, whom we can trust. Um, and this is where we develop the other, we, we develop the other um, nervous system, which is social engagement. Do you get me? Which is where, which is, which is where we develop the social engagement, which is the vagus nerve, as a dorsal nerve, and there's other one which I can't remember at the moment. Um, but um, the vagus nerve is a social engagement, social engagement um, part of our brain, and the fight of the fight of flight, which is the reptilian brain, it's it's also our whole brain that we have, and you know this thing is all. Like I said, and as you know, the brain have sent more signal to our body more than our body sends signal to the brain. So it's it's um which it, this is where the neurobiology comes in. All your vital organs are connected to the vagus nerve. So there, when when we when the vagus nerve picks up, you know safety of danger or safety from the environment, it sends it to the, to, the, to the organs of the body, either to relax or <laughs> to get ready to fight. So in, um, in, in, in intimate relationship, what we need is the right arousal of the whole brain to be alert and the right arousal of the new brain of the vagus nerve mm. um, which is to which is to feel safe as to be engaged mm. so both um yeah i think yeah so this this is where you know the brain it's 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 you know when i say neurobiology it's it's not it's it's not a cognitive pain is the brain evolution, is the evolution of the brain, of our biology, 
that it, it, it's like that's what you said at the beginning. It's a biological imperative that we that we bond, and our biology have created these organs, these nervous system to help us have to help us have intimate, safe relationship. And when we experience trauma, um, these hold brain and new brain they function in a way that does not help us have a secure relationship mm -hmm. with other people. And, and, and even when there is safety in a relationship, um, may, some people with trauma cannot, most people, you know, the, the, most, the, the most affected by emotional neglect trauma or the avoidant, ambivalent, or disorganized um, attachment. Mm. They are the one who are mostly affected by emotional neglect trauma. And if it's untreated still as an adult, you know, it goes into more, you know, trauma, um, attachment trauma. It, it goes to the end of the spectrum of attachment trauma disorder spectrum. And, um, you know, it can, it can go into all kinds of, pathology into our kind of psychopathology and then um, which is where our, our society really needs to wake up and we, we, and we, where we need to start looking at you know at behavior not as a, as a psycho behavior but as a biology as a response to trauma sure sure so I, it's it, not somebody just making it up no. it's, a, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a response to trauma that is untreated on scene, yeah. Mm, that makes sense. And uh, it's interesting because it's the first time I've, um, well, I, I agree wholeheartedly, but um, very, very rare, especially in the personal development field, that you will find that people will say you, you know, the, the new mind and the old mind or new brain and old brain, actually you need the two and it's the relationship between the two and having that balance which will keep you in um, in a, a certain level of a homeostasis, I guess, is for want of a yeah. good word. And, and because the you know the the alertness the kind of it's not it's not a bad thing but we we kind of make the old reptilian mind or the primitive the primitive the primitive, primitive brain uh, almost the bad guy <laughs> exactly <laughs> it brings up all the, it brings up all those uh, unwanted emotions or whatever yeah. that are, so say unwanted the, the chemical response to our stimulus right Absolutely. so um, but um, it is um, there's value and learning from, yeah, in, in those kind of responses there's something to bring yeah. um into your awareness so um totally you, yeah yeah so you were saying about the you know the safety i wanted to go into into to, to sort of segue into that a bit more but you know the science the science of safety and is in particular the um the relational side of things is as far as safety is concerned how we how we cultivate that for ourselves and how we cultivate that for others as well because well, i'm aware but um to a degree at least that how we are how we relate you know Masculine to masculine, feminine to feminine, feminine to masculine is very, yeah. very, is very, very different as well as using, as well as um, having our own kind of a trauma uh, um, assigned to that as well. But just on the, yeah. um, could you speak on that a bit, just on the kind of the different dynamics and how sometimes we don't hear what's actually being said. We hear it from our own sort of um, our biology, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, I um, actually just heard Dr. Stephen, Stephen Port mention, say something which I can remember very well. You know, when we are, when we are, I mean, this is very, you know, this is very, you can feel this when you're mm. angry. Mm. Um, you can no longer hear safety care because, and when, you know, it doesn't say that, you know, when you were in, in that physiological arousal of danger, um, it's, it's, it blocks your hearing from picking up certain level of frequency. Mm. Sure. Certain level um, safety frequency. It blocks your ear from hearing it. And when someone is having trauma, um, like developmental trauma, um, and it's, it's untreated, you know, what do people say? People say that, oh, this person does not, does not take any responsibility for their behavior or this person and doesn't um, um, 
doesn't listen to you at all. It's just, it's just their perception of things. Mm. You know, it's easy to see. Yeah, that is true. But it's more of a neurobiological history going on for them. Mm. That, you know, and it's not them doing this. It's their, it's their history of neurobiology that is, that is showing up in, in that moment. And, um, and in, in relationship, for example, you know, it's um, what, you know, what needs to happen between, you know, relationship is, is, is the awareness, is education of our brain, mm. of how our brain has evolved to, to, keep, us, to keep us alive. So yeah. when you are, when you're being defensive, when you are not hearing what your partner is saying all the time, um, when, you know, when you're constantly in a hypervigilant state, constantly looking for threat, when you cannot really hear your partner's emotional pain or beat for connection, and you are in a hyperosis all the time, you know, it, it's, 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 you know, I used to say something that, you know, blame it on, your, on the brain. Mm. It's your brain trying to keep you, trying to help you or keep you alive. Mm. And it's not about this present moment occurrence. It's, you know, just to use the Pareto principle, 80% of our reaction in this moment is coming from our history. True. <laughs> yeah, so, <sure. laughs> so if you are being, you know, if I'm hungry at my partner right now, if I'm really hungry at my partner for what she did, <clears throat> you know, I would definitely, you know, t- tell myself, eight percent of my reaction to her right now has nothing to do with what is happening right now. Mm. Has to do with my own, with my own history, with my own history of being abandoned, neglected. Eighty yeah. percent of my reaction. So, if we both know this. We can we can give each other a space that you know call us child call us inner child mm. is dysregulated. It's my inner child still. Sure, you know is that inner child and that inner child you know have wounds mm. and you know when we say healing wounds, it's not like you know this inner child is going to become a new person. It's, no. it's the same inner child but with an adult side of it accepting. And holding that child mm. to, you know, to be present in this moment. So, um, in, 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 in intimate relationship, you know, what we need is to realize that, you know, when we are defensive towards each other, you know, it's not a cognitive um, psycho behavior thing. It's, your, it's mainly your biology. Mm. It's your brain and biology, and what we need to do is step out. But as you know, if we are not educated about about neuro, about neuroscience, about our brain evolution, we have no chance of begin to understand what is going on mm. for us. Mm. We just blame each other all the time because we don't understand what the brain and body is, is doing. We just say, you have been defensive. I am being defensive. Mm. But no why? It's not, I am being def- Your brain and biology. You see, the brain have more, their relationship is, is a right brain, it's a right brain um, thing. Mm. Relationship is a, you can do relationship in the left brain. Um, and people who have experienced, you know, childhood emotional trauma, um, people who have really been impacted by the law, you know, they are seeking to live their life in the left brain, which is to analyze, overgeneralize, thing, you know, they are seeking to live their life in the left brain. Right. Which is why they're constantly running away from relationship, they want intimacy, they pull it away, because it's because of what happened to them. Yeah. So relationship is very much, is very much relationship, intimacy, you know, is a, is a very much right brain to right brain communication, which is the language of Dr. Alan Shaw. Um, mm-hmm. That is um, Alan, A-double-L-A-N, and Shaw is S-C-H-O-R-E. 
I would recommend people read that. Mm-hmm. Uh, people research um, this guy. It's very powerful guy. And um, so, you know, and, and this right brain have a lot of, have, a, have more direct access to our biology, to our physical body, more than the left brain. Mm-hmm. So when we are, when, when we are, when we are angry, which is also a right brain activity, um, in you know, our body just, oh, we go into our animal mm. a lot. So when people are having a heated argument, you know, um, they need to realize that, you know, the brain is doing what it's supposed to do. <laughs> sure. Oh, man. <laughs> the brain is doing what it's supposed to do yeah, to yeah. keep you alive nice. when the dragon comes. Survival. So, yeah. Survivor. So mm. your body is standing now and your air standing now. It's not your partner causing it. It's mm. your brain doing its thing. Mm. So, you know, most of the issues we have in our relationship has to do with the father. Society has done the bad job of miseducation where, you know, we place the, the, the horse before the cart or we put the cart before the horse. Mm. So that we're, you know, for example, the field of neuroscience is just becoming popular. You know, like something that is sexy, something that is, you know, now there's a lot of causes of neuroscience going on. And, you know, I'm part of that victim where I, I, I don't even listen to neuroscience. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I didn't know anything about my brain. You know, I'm sure this is a very, you know, this is a very popular thing saying in the world of as a development where they say that, you know, our brain does not come with a manual. No, of course not. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That, you know, they say that, you know, um, they say that our, you know, we, we are only using 10% of our brain capacity. Hmm. Fucking Jesus, man. Sorry. <laughs> that <laughs> that's fine. No, that's fine. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That is, not, that is not our fault because the field of neuroscience has been kept to the, you know, at the very secret, to the power hmm. of the being. Hmm. And rather than share to, you know, to come on lay people to understand how our biology and our brain has evolved to bond with other people, to have mm. intimate, loving, emotional, intimate love relationship. Mm. You know, my friend, I have a friend on Instagram called um, Harlan Singh Dinan. Uh, you can find her on um, hashtag NYFT. NY which is notes, notes from your therapist. She talks a lot about, um, about how our brain is as highly evolved for relationship, to mm. need other people. Mm. That's the word I'm for. Our brain is highly evolved. To, do you know, our brain and biology has highly evolved for billions of years to need other people. Sure. So, you know, um, when these people, like our primary caregiver, um, you know, does not respond to us, you know, does not respond to when we are crying or when we need them to regulate us, and this consistently happens, it's a very big experience for a child. Mm. And, and the child not having you know, the skill, you can't expect a child to have a skill to regulate it, it, no. regulate us, it, it, it or he or ourself. And, you know, so it, the brain is designed to keep them alive. So the, the brain just do its thing, shut it down, shut down those hyper arouser. It's too much of emotional intensity here. Just shut down and we've lost the baby. And yeah. association start happening. And this is where psychopathology begins when dissociation begins, when the, when the baby begins to shut down. Mm. So or the baby cannot, res, cannot, does not recognize, the brain does not recognize safety cue anymore. No. Does not recognize safety cue. It's just vigilant and kill or be killed behavior, uh, which is reptilian brain, kill or be killed. I got to kill before, I, before you kill me. Things like um, narcissistic personality response, um, Behavioral pattern is just based on reptilian brain. And right. what this you need to do is understand the brain evolution to bond with our people. And what their brain is doing is to keep them alive. 
mm. but they remain in this whole brain, this reptilian brain anymore. Because mm. mm. it's actually not healthy for the body. No, it's no, definitely not. For the body. No. So um, you need to calm, you need to bring safety regulation to the body, mm. which is core regulation, and you need other people to do this. And you can do this with a therapist to develop a relationship, so that you can begin to you can begin to um, figure out and begin to move into what they call an secure attachment with a safe other people like. Mm. A therapist, or if you're lucky and you're open, uh, you can have an intimate relationship with someone whom you can begin to walk this hand secure attachment with. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah. So how do we how do we how do we start doing that? You know, bringing safety into our own. Uh, someone listening to this thing, okay, I'm, I really need some of this because I'm. I kind of I realize I recognize there is a lack of safety within my uh, within my makeup or whatever. How would you? you know how does someone start to do that for themselves is it, pos- is it possible it's definitely possible mm-hmm. um you know the first thing education mm. education 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 you know there's no amount of work you can do in therapy mm. there's no amount of work you can do in a, in a therapy room you have to you have to listen to that podcast yeah. on interpersonal neurobiology you know read books like Hold Me Tight mm-hmm. by Dr. Sue Johnson, which is, which is a research-based book, but is written in, in layman's language. Mm-hmm. Um, read books like, um, you know, um, The Pocket Guide um, to Polyvago Theory by Debs, Deb Danner, Dana Debs, mm-hmm. and um, we talk about the, the science of feeling self, the power of feeling self. And also, no, the pocket guide for polyvagal theory is written by Stephen Porridge. You can understand that, um, but you can understand the real book. The real book, the polyvagal theory book, is very intense. Um, and Deb, Dana, Deb did a good job of their polyvagal theory book. Um, and r- she wrote, she co authored a book called Polyvagal Theory in Therapy. Right. Which, which you can, which someone can start reading, so you can start understanding your biology and your brain. When you start reading and understanding, you know, education is so powerful. You mm-hmm. know, I'm sure you can read a lot of codes on education, and the right education is what we need. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so when you start start reading that, and um, and then you can either move into a therapy room and start find people who are doing neurofeedback. Neurofeedback is founded by um, Dr. Sibin Fisher. Fisher. Dr. Sibin Fisher. S-E-B-E-R-N mm-hmm. and Fisher. And um, neurofeedback therapy is very effective and uh, also is EMDR, which is high movement desensitizing something something. Um, <laughs> and also, <laughs> and also you know, emotional focus therapy is also very powerful. Um, what you need is really a trauma, a trauma informed therapy, mm-hmm. and emotional focus therapy, or neuro neuro science based kind of therapy. A yeah. therapy that is brain science informed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, um, yeah. Those okay. really help, and 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 then if you are in intimate relationship, you know, start reading this book together and start writing notes, and um, mm, that's cool. That's and, a good idea. And, yeah, and the other things you can do, which is to encourage right brain to right brain communication, okay. which is um, which is something I'm, I'm going to discover myself, which is you know, um, movement. Um, Either contact improvise in a safe environment, which is a you no know, contact improvise, which is like a dance with other people where you dance together in a very lovely way, or even tango or five readings. Um, but you do it with the education of brain science that you have. Mm. And so you notice where flashbacks are coming for you, where, you know, some history coming up for you and things like drumming is also very powerful 
you can you can take a drumming class a you know a bit of african drumming that is very right brain african drumming is very powerful oh, okay um, why is that yeah. there is there are some in bristol um if you if you give a google african drumming classes in bristol there there there's there's a lot of them in bristol and i'm sure there's a lot of them as well in mm. in um in all of you know everywhere in you know, london wherever you may be mm-hmm. and so so is capoeira capoeira is also very good because mm. you're dancing with all the people and dancing singing drumming humming they are right brain to right brain communication mm. so what i'm yeah. what, what i'm sensing there sorry to cut you off is that is uh, yeah. there's something about um the I think the Greeks called it communitas, which is the coming together of, um, essentially coming together for the, the same common thing, which is why then we like things like going to live music or seeing shows or exactly. whatever way we're experiencing some, some sort of performance, etc. or we're part of it, like singing, like you just said, being in a choir and you're there for this common purpose and then you exactly create correct. Your, your own energy and that brings up your uh, similar type of, um, some sort of force field, I, I, I guess. And Indeed, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and it, it is that right brain, right brain connection that is going on. Because when you sing, you are stimulating the fragus now, which is the, 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 the safety keels of your body. Hmm. You are activating the, 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 the vagus nerve. You are, you are also activating the whole brain to be alert, but in a very safe environment. Hmm. And, um, and you are, you know, drumming stimulate the, the rhythm of the heart. And, right. and, and, you know, and it's their right brain to right brain communication. And, you know, it's, it's, it, and we, when you do this with an education, with an awareness of your neurobiological history, whether that is emotional neglect trauma, and you begin to relate to all the people, to your partner, mm. you know, from that awareness, from that body, right brain to right brain communication, little by little, you begin to create a safe space enough mm. to explore your past. Sure. Sure. Because, you know, what people need to do is to create enough safety to be with uncomfortable feelings. Mm. Yeah. Like a bank account. You, I remember you saying. Exactly. Yes. A safety exactly. bank account. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. That makes perfect sense. I mean, it's, it's funny. I just want to share an experience real quickly was um, when I went to, when you, you just touched on, especially the drumming and stuff like that, the, the sound is very, I'm, I love my music. So sound is very, a, bit, a massive thing for me. And um, when we went away to Bali, we took the group to have an experience in the, a thing called the Pyramids of Chi, which essentially is a sound healing thing. So there's the, um, the drums, the singing bowls, and different different instruments being played in this um, in this pyramid, which is soundproofed and actually replicated um, facing due north, like the ones in Egypt. But the echo yeah. chamber in and around that, so there must have been about fifty people in there, and the the, exper- the experience and the, the reverberations of the energy just uh, every time it puts me fast asleep, and I feel like I sleep like a baby. And it doesn't matter what time of day That's I go. It could be, we got there at seven o'clock at night. I think that time was the spirit. The experience I had before was like two o'clock in the afternoon and it makes no difference. I feel like it, uh, it's an incubator. It's warm. I'm, I'm a very aware of the other people's energy in the room, but it is, it's the most profound experience. And I think a couple of the other people that were with me as well had that same, had the same thing. And most people do. It's the, it's the most bizarre. There's almost a, a release of tension and a release of energy that continues throughout that hour session as well. So um, it, it, I'm really pleased that you brought that up because it, it really is true. And I, do, I, hadn't, I hadn't considered drumming classes or anything else like that, but I think that would be, um, I, can see yeah. the, I, can, I can see the value in that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm. And, you know, and, and if you can do this mm. with that education of a of brain, of co-regulation, mm. you know, of, 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 of creating you know, a sense of safety in your body with a few others that you trust. You know, you could do it with a partner. You could both pick up a drumming class together or singing together in, in your house together. Um, but with that awareness of co-regulating of that, you know, in, or, you know, that, you know, you are the, you are the keeper and the guidance of safety and security in this relationship. 
mm-hmm. that this relationship is not just about love, it's about security. And, and we need to have each other's back, you know, like in the days of hold, you know, when a dragon comes for you, you know, you need to know that your partner or your, 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 your tribe, which is a language I don't like to use, mm-hmm. or the, the few people that you trust will be there for you to have your back. Yes, but 100%. we don't have dragon dinosaur chestnuts anymore. We have, you know, mental emotional threat. Mm. Yes, yes. You know, that our our whole brain is to response to. Mm. So you know, we have to do this thing with awareness of what's of the purpose of 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 relationship. You know, like I said, relationship, secure relationship is is a is a biological imperative. Mm. Uh, and and when, and this is where the education is to come back. Yes. You know, um, relationship is not just about love. It's not just about it's great. It's not. It's, 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 I mean, love is great. Um, it's important, but it's not really about that. It's about it's about it's about security. You know, mm-hmm. Doctor Doctor Stan Tactin, who, whom I also rec- recommend, uh, who is a um, founder of the Pact Institute. You know, it says that you know, secure function relationship um, is about it's about safety. Mm, right. Yeah. Secure functioning relationship is about safety. And like you said earlier, it's, it's having that emotional bank account mm. top, top every day. I'm not saying that you know you won't have argument, you won't have conflict, but <laughs> make sure that you're not so far in deficit. That when under another chaos happen, you are in you know you're in your own overdraft or <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right yeah yeah so, yeah. yeah so <laughs> you have to be you have you have to like I see yeah you have to make sure your back account your safety trust back account is always top top when something goes wrong you make time to talk about it mm. but that time you know you 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 also are aware of your physiological state. Mm. You know, when you're mad, when you're angry, it's not just what's happening. It's your neurobiological history and it's your brain and body doing their thing. Mm. So uh, you need to step out completely to, to calm and come back. Yeah. Um, and this takes a lot of education, a lot of listening to podcasts on these, a lot of reading on these, a lot of podcasts on these. You know, like I said, you know, people say is that, you know, the brain does not come with the manual. Jesus, it, yeah, it comes. We just we close our eyes to it. Yes. And which is why the field of neuroscience is becoming a big thing and the field of interpersonal neurobiology is becoming a big thing mm. and we have neurofeedback therapy which is based on, which is based on this neuroscience. Mm. We have a field of um, packed, packed institute by Dr. Stan Tactin which is also based on this neurobiology and we have the field of emotional focus therapy which is based on this also um science of mind mind of neuro of neurology not mm. mind yeah mind it's i can't talk about it at the moment yes. um but check the work of um check the work of dr daniel sigur how it defines the mind mm. um, dr daniel sigur is the founder of interpersonal neurobiology and it's very powerful definition i can actually can of remember it right now, and yeah, but mostly is the this field of neuroscience. Mm. We need to really educate it so mm. so much, so that we can understand this powerful thing called our brain, mm. which is designed to keep us alive. Yeah, for you know, sure. You might have survived over this time because of our brain. Yeah, yeah, and we don't give any credit or understand our brain of. I've done it. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I, I want to echo that as well. As, as, as much as the, you know, the, the it, 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 like you said, it is there. The brain, like you said, it does come with manuals, and people are doing some fantastic work in in, in this field as well. But it's it's, yeah. it's, it's 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 the awareness, it's the education, but it's also the application. And it, and it, when you're applying these types of things, it's not beating yourself up when you get it wrong. Or like you're, no. you, should, you should know everything. It's just to have you apply it. Okay, you go again. We just be your own guinea pig. 
you know, go, go again, try that again. Okay. Get the feedback off of that. Okay. Okay. Shit. I fucked up there again. I went back to this old way of being, I went back to this old pattern. Let me just make these kind of tweaks and this and then, so I know I can do this again because, uh, and when this arises again, then I have that presence or I have that feedback to sort of make those slight adjustments. And, and over time then, you become, you evolve into something better and have a better understanding of you, yourself. Absolutely. And then, and then of course, other, others as well, of course. Of mm. course. And I want now to say is that even when, even, you know, when we, any kind of, any kind of misbehavior, any mm. kind of, um, any kind of destructive, chaotic behavior, it's, it's coming from that neurobiology, it's coming from a dysregulated state. Mm. It's coming from that, you know, uh, you know when, when we say we have creative block, for example, it, it, it's, it's coming from that fear brain, from that being stuck in that reptilian brain mm. um, and, and it being stuck in that right brain. And what we need to do is to, is to you know, co-regulate with somebody, you know, talk about it to somebody, somebody whom you trust, mm. you know, and, and you know, People who have trauma, you know, have issues with spontaneity, with creativity, with, um, you know, with, 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 with collaborations, you know, which is why we have war all the time on our planet because the, 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 the primitive brain does not understand collaboration, does not, doesn't give a fuck about collaboration or, no, or, no. Or, 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 you know, there's no space for some spontaneity. It's about plan kill or be killed mm. and so when people are, are mis people are in a people have a uh you know they have creative blocks or they they have some chaotic disruptive you know behavior you have to understand that it's because they are they are not feeling safe in the biology mm. Mm. you know either because you know they, they can't afford to buy food to eat or they, they have no roof over their head mm. and they still want to help them. Or it could be just be, you know, fear, driven. It could be, it could be anything that could throw them into that dysregulated state. And so what, what they need is to find a safe order, which is why therapy is very good and group work is very important where you can go and talk about this thing and, and create, once you talk about it, you begin to open up a field of core regulation and begin to stimulate the vagus nerve so that your body can come back into, you know, into a, into a, into a safe physiology. Then your right brain can start kicking in and giving you the creativity and the, and the, and the, how oh, I didn't know I could, I, I didn't know I could ask for help. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't know that person who, you know, you know people, you know people who, you know, kill themselves because because they can't pay the rent or kill themselves because, you know, they can't buy food today or something like that. Sure. You know, you yeah. wonder, I'm so stupid. There's enough money on the planet to feed other people, mm. but because of being stuck in that reptilian brain where they cannot see that there is safety kill, on the planet, that there is, there is help out. They can't see it. Mm, no, you know. Yeah, sure. Which is the case with which is, which is a case with 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 suicide, mm. uh, which I can't talk about because it's a completely different topic. Sure, um, they can't just reach out for help mm. because they are stuck in that, you know, um, left um, hyper hypo arousal state. Yes. Yeah. Oof. Good Lord. <laughs> Cola, my, oh my God. I knew this was going to be good, but, <laughs> but yeah, there's just, there's just so much content there. I mean, uh, oh man, man, that's a, uh, I am learning myself. I am just learning a lot. Of and, course, uh, but I'm we're learning we're, about myself. We're it's all incredible. students. though. we're all students. though, right? So uh, yes. it's a, it's a continuation. And this is the thing. Um, we, people come in at different levels and uh, I, I think we can always as regardless of where we are we've got there's a like you said people need people and we, we kind of we've all got something that we can add value to somebody so Indeed. you know um with that in mind i just before uh, where can people 
Where can people reach you? How, how can they get hold of you? Good question. Good question. I am, I am just training. I am, you know, you can always reach me via my Instagram page at the moment. So what, I'm, I'm, I'm just, um, your... that is, um, interpersonal neurobio, interpersonal neurobio healing. Okay. Um, you can find me on there. You can just put color a day to on this, on, mm-hmm. on uh, Instagram. You'll find me, but you can put at interpersonal neurobio healing. Okay. And, um, yeah, my website is coming soon and I'm also going to start a podcast as well mm-hmm. very soon as well. Cool. And I'm also training to become a therapist as, as well, but I'm also seeing clients as well, clients who have trauma, mm-hmm. um, history, um, couples with trauma or couples at the brink of divorce. Sure. You know, they can definitely reach out to me okay. and we can begin a process together of helping them out. Of course. And um, yeah, you can always reach out to me very much via my Instagram okay. or send me an email on um, caller, K-O-L-A dot A-D-E-T-U at gmail.com. Great. And, That's um, great. Yeah. And we, can, we can either do, um, we can either meet one-to-one to start the process of therapeutic process or, mm-hmm. yeah, that will be the first um, okay. direction or via Zoom video call. Mm-hmm. But um, because of trauma, Definitely have to meet up one to one first. Sure, sure. So, okay. So I, work, I work with couples with trauma. Um, I work with individual with trauma. So mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's great. That's great. And like I say, there was a, there was an abundance of uh, <laughs> of um, resources that you mentioned throughout this um, talk uh, podcast. Yeah. So what I will do, I'll add all that in the show notes. I add all that yeah. to um, I also Kola's details as well. But before I let you go, Kola, I just wanted to honour you and just like um, for being so open and sharing all your knowledge that you've got, you've come to so far, and it's been great to. Get, I've been a massive fan of your work on uh, on Instagram and the stuff that you put up is really insightful and not, like you say not enough people are talking about the neurobiology and actually it's not it's it's uh it's there and it's accessible to everybody and as you can see you're clearly passionate about this but and 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 for good reason because it, it, it literally can change the state of uh, people's relationships it changes people's lives and again and inevitably again using that kind of relational thing people need people you know it has that ripple the ripple effect or that exponential the the exponential effect to then change a level of consciousness around us you know as i'm talking i get a vision of again the african drums and the people and people singing and dancing around it and the level of community around it and joy and what a lot of people don't recognize is that that type of thing the rhythmic or the dancing or the music is actually yes is is actually has healing properties it's got nothing to do with the sound per se it's not it's not entertainment it's healing do you see what i mean it is. so it it's, is. it's that is that type of thing is um is really powerful so you know thank i've got so many ideas and things off the back of this of this talk and i'm i'm really grateful for you uh yeah i appreciate you brother thank i appreciate you, it man. <laughs> i don't know to meet you honestly thank you so much for reaching out to me Mm-hmm. And I'm really grateful to be on this podcast with you. I'm really, really delighted. It's just the beginning of my own work yes. as well. So um, I'm really excited to, to be on this journey myself and to be sharing this. And sure. I'm looking forward to sharing more and helping people more and also, you know, enjoy my whole life. Which is Indeed. Very important. You know, suffering of, human, of, of humanity that is really avoided and misunderstood a lot. Yes. I mean, we have our prison full of people that actually what they need is, is compassionate, you know, um, support, not lock them up. No. And, um, and that's going to change a lot, you know, mm. in the next 10, 20 years. We, we can't keep having the level of prison that we have right now. No, no, for sure. Something about it. So, um, yeah, that's true. And, and even, even all this chaos on the planet and the developing countries, you know, Africa, Indonesia, Asia, all these developing countries, we can we cannot we, can, we cannot continue. We cannot continue. And neuroscience is developing really, really fast now. Mm. And this knowledge is developing really, really fast. So yeah, we are on the cutting edge somehow. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Oh, I had one more question actually, but I, I forgot to ask yeah. but it was um what does what does living full or living fully mean to you? 
Lee Fully, wow, good question. I, I guess I just love it. I think I just love it. It just came natural to me when I saw it on your page. Mm. I think um I think the whole purpose of life, you know, is to continually pushing every day to live life fully, to embody more intimacy, to embody more creativity, to you know to to explore more of life travel meet other people or the culture mm. eat different eat different food create different food um have more experiences in life that support your evolution mm. as human with your brain mm. and i think um, it's a very powerful word it's a very very powerful living fully it's so simple but it's it's all very much mm. very brilliant thank you yeah it's nice